okay, meaning the mean, median, mode, stand, and then some quartiles and percentiles given a frequency distribution in a stem and leaf plot. Okay, so the example I give you, number one, they give you the number of classes a sample of CCC students are taking this semester. So in the sample, there's uh, 12 students that took one class, nine students that took two classes, and so on. We want to find the sample mean and standard deviation for the number of classes these students take. Okay, so to find the sample mean, essentially what you want to do is you want to add up all the data values and then divide by the number of data values. Well, the frequency column tells you how many of each data value you have. So the 12, like I said, meant that you have 12 students who took one class, nine students who took two, and so on. So that's kind of annoying to add up all those numbers, okay, to add one to itself 12 times, two to itself nine times, three to itself 18 times, and so on. So I'm going to show you in the calculator how to do this. And if you turn your calculator on, and then the menu we're going to go to all the time in here, or most of the time, is our stat menu. And then what we're going to do is we're going to edit a list. We're going to choose edit. Now I already have list in here just to save time. Okay, but what you do is you enter your variable, which is the number of classes, into list one. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five. If you have something in your list and you want to clear it out, okay, what you can do is press clear and then enter, and it clears out the list. Okay, and then you can enter your values in. Okay, so in list one, you're going to put your number of classes, your, your variable, your, your x variable, and then in list two is going to be your frequency. Okay, so I already have those entered in list one and list two, as you can see. Okay, so you may need to pause the video at some point. I'm just going to keep on going to, for the sake of time. Okay, so to find the sample mean, okay, what we do now is you go back to your stat menu. Okay, so you press stat. And now we're going to calculate. What we're going to calculate is one var stats. Okay, option one. What that stands for is one variable stats. Our only variable we're looking at, the only thing changing, is the number of classes. Okay, so we choose that. Now, you may have a newer operating system than I do. If you have this older operating system, it'll, it'll show up on your calculator like this. as one bar stats. And then you want to choose second one. Okay, notice how right above the one key, it says L1 above it. It's hard to see here. Okay, so it's L1. So do second one, comma, second two for L2. Okay, so one bar stats on L1, comma, L2. Press enter and it gives you the sample mean is 3.49 and the standard deviation, we're looking at a sample here because they tell you in the problem, okay, right up here they say a sample, so that's S of X, okay, is 1.25926, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the sample mean, X bar, about 3.49, now if you said 3.5, that's fine, and then the sample standard deviation, S of X equals 1.26. Okay, if you said 1.3, okay, that would be okay on this one. Now notice that the population standard deviation is a little bit smaller, um, 1.252 rather than 1.259. Okay, so the standard deviation for the population, if you round to the nearest hundred, that'd be 1.25. Okay, but since we have a sample, we want to make sure we use the correct uh, standard deviation, the S of X. Okay, so that's how you find the mean standard deviation for a frequency distribution. Okay, basically you put your x variable in list one. Okay, that's list one. And then list two is your frequency column. And then you do the one bar stats on L1 comma L2. Now, if you had the different operating system, once you did the one bar stats, oops, let me clear that out. Okay, once you choose to do one bar stats, um, I forget the exact words that it used, but it'll it'll say, uh, I, th I think it says X list. Okay, that'll be list one. Okay, I think it says X list on the other operating system. And then for list two, it'll say frequency list, RFEQ list. Okay, you want that to be list two. Okay, and then calculate. Okay, choose calculate, and it'll give you the same, the same uh, screen or the same answers as it'll look the same as this right here that I had. 
Okay, moving along. Complete the column for the uh, uh, in the table for relative frequency. Okay, so looking at relative frequency. Okay, what that means is what percent of the data is in each row or what percent of the students take one class when compared to the rest of the data. So how does that one value relate to the rest? Or what's the frequency relative to the rest? So basically, we have 12 and 9 and 18 and 40 and 21. If you add all those up, the sum of those, okay, the sum of the frequencies gives you 100. So the relative frequency for the students that take one class would be 12 out of 100, which is about 0.12. The next row will be 9 out of 100, take two classes, which is 0.09, and so on. Okay, now I have the answer key here, so I don't have to write so much. Okay, would that be the relative frequency? Basically saying 12% take one class, 9% take two classes, and so on. Now, if, if the sum of the frequency wasn't 100, just suppose there was 80 instead, you would say 12 over 80, and then whatever decimal that turns out to be, and then 9 over 80, whatever that turns out to be, and so on. Okay, so it doesn't have to be 100, okay, but, but uh, you turn it into your decimal or percentage. Okay, moving along to uh, the mode and the median. Well, the mode is the value that occurs most often. So the highest frequency, okay, the frequency of 40 occurs um, when you have four classes. So the mode will be four classes, okay, because that's what occurs most often. And then the median, okay, the middle value, when the numbers are arranged in order. So if you were to, if you were to write 12 ones, nine twos, 18 threes, and so on, there's 100 data values there. So that means that you're looking at basically 50 on each side of the median. Well, to find the location of the median, Okay, the location, you do n plus 1 over 2, so that'd be 100 plus 1 over 2, which is 50.5. So that's saying you would average the 50th and 51st number in the list. Well, if you look at your cumulative frequency, you have 12 here and 9, that's 21, plus another 18, gives you 39. Well, to get to the 50 and 51st number, 40 more is going to take you well past that. So the, the 50th and 51st number will be included both in this interval here. Um, so uh, uh, four classes, okay, will be included there. So the uh, median, the middle number will be four. Okay, a very common mistake student, uh, may, students will make on this is they look at one, two, three, four, five and say, well, hey, gee, three looks like the middle number because that's halfway, halfway between one and five. Well, the mistake is with that is you have to pay attention to frequencies also. When the frequencies are different, then um, you have to make sure that you actually count into the data set to the location that you're looking for. Okay, so, um, so again, the median is four. Okay, so that's how you find some of those descriptive statistics and, and values on a frequency distribution. Okay, question number two here, looking at the stem and leaf plot. Okay, so the stem and leaf plot, Okay, this gives the number of texts sent per day for a sample of teenagers. So the way you look at this, I should have drawn this in beforehand. Okay, but generally your stem and leaf will have like a T like that in it to separate the stems from the leaves. And all we're saying here is the 205, okay, what that means is, is that there was two students in this in the 20s, okay, that sent 20 something texts. So the, so the two represents the stem unit, and those are the tens place. The leaf unit is the ones place. So when you look at a two and a zero, 20 would represent the two zero, which means there were 20 texts sent by one student. The two and the five means that there were 25 te uh, texts sent by another student. Okay, when you look way down here at the bottom, like 7-1, that means that there's a student that sent 71 texts. Well, 7-1 shows up again, so there's another student that sent 71 texts. So there are two students, two different students, who sent 71 texts. Okay, so to explain what the first row means, I just talked about that. Okay, so the first row, 
meant that one team sent 20 texts and another team sent 25 texts. There were 34 total students in this uh, in this uh, survey. So the way you count that, again, if you know, if you recognize two zero two five, there's are two students there. So 20 and 25, there's two students, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Keep on counting, and you would get up to 34. So the so your n, your sample size there was 34. Okay. To find the sample mean and standard deviation. Well, now the only difference between finding the mean and standard deviation here is we just have basically a set of data listed out rather than in the first example where we had a distribution of the number of classes and frequency. In that one, we use list one and list two. Well, now all we have is just one list of data, 20, 25, 32, and so on. So the way we do that in our calculator, this is actually easier. Okay, we go to our calculator and go to our stat, and we're going to edit the list again, so we'll edit. Now, I already have these values in list three, again, to, just to save time, um, and, I'll, and that's what I'm referred to as list three. If you want to clear out list one and then use list one, that's up to you. I'm just going to use list three. So you enter the values 20, 25, 32, 33, 36, and so on. Enter all those values into your list. And you notice by the time you put the last value in, okay, that's 72 at the very end. Okay, notice how it says L334. That means there's 34 data values in my list, which matches up with how many I counted. Okay, so that's one way to make sure you put all the values in. It is very easy to make a mistake and, and miss a value or, uh, or as you're entering them in, enter the wrong number. You just got to be careful with that. Okay, so once you have those values in your list, okay, we have a minor in list three, so that's what I'm referred to. Okay, what we do is go back to our stat menu. Okay, so press stat. And then we're going to calculate the one bar stats again. Except now we only have our, our values in, in list three. So now all we need to do is second three. Okay, and that'll give us whatever list we put our data values in. That's the list we're using. Okay, press enter. And there's your uh, sample mean, 52.26. Our sample standard deviation, 13.426, okay, and so on. Okay, so as far as answering that question, find the sample mean and standard deviation, there you go. Okay, next thing we have is we're trying to find the median in Q1 and then Q3. Okay, so. To find the median, remember that's the middle number. Now the good news is if you put these in the calculator, notice how there's an arrow that's going down here. If you use your arrow key to scroll down, it says the median is 55.5. Okay, MED stands for median, and it actually finds the quartiles for you, 44 and 62. Okay, let me just find one second. Point nine. Okay, if we want to find the median by hand, okay, what we look at is we're trying to find the middle number again. Well, again, if there were 34 data values, so there's 34 total data values, if you do 34 plus 1, so the location, 34 plus 1 over 2, 35 over 2, 17.5. Okay, so that means you need to average the 17th and 18th data values. So as you count into the data set, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, so here's the 17th value, and then here's the 18th value. So you average 55 and 56 together to get 55.5. Um, okay, so that's how you would do it by hand. 
Okay, the first quartile is 25% of the data uh, of the way into the data set. So if you did 25% or 0.25 of the number of values we have, 34, that gives you 8.5, which means we have to count into the ninth data value. Okay, so when you get when you uh, when you do that uh, calculation there, you always round up to the next whole number. Okay, so we're basically saying we have to count 8.5 data values in. Well, you can't count 8.5, so you have to go to the ninth data value. Okay, so the ninth data value in, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so the ninth data value in is 44. So Q1 equals 44. Okay, and what that means is, is that 25% of the data lies at or below a uh, student that sent 44 texts. Okay, so 25% of the students in the survey sent 44 texts or less or fewer. Okay, Q3, if you wanted to find that, okay, then that you, you would just do 0 0.75 times 34, and then uh, similar similar uh, arithmetic there, you would, you would count into the data set of however many that turns out to be, and uh, again, on the calculator it showed um, It showed that, oops, sorry, one of our stats on list three. Okay, it showed you that the third quartile was 62. Okay, so that's what you get for Q3 if you did all that arithmetic. Okay, and again, Q1 is 44 is right here. Okay, and then the last one for P90, okay, the 90th percentile. Well, now we're going to count 90% of the way into the data. Okay, so when you do that, 90% of 34 data values gives you 30.6 so that means you have to count to the 31st value so you have to count 31 data values in so the easiest way to do that is to count backwards from 34 so here's the 34th value at 72 and then there's a 33rd 32nd 31st would be 68 okay so 68 would be p90 Okay, so what that would mean is that as soon as the text 68 that sent 68 texts um, was more than 90% of the rest of the data, or 90% of the students in the survey sent fewer than or equal to 68 texts. Okay, so there's a few different ways to word that. Okay, so that's how you find some of the uh, descriptive statistics and and. Uh, measures of center and, and variability using your calculator if you're given a frequency distribution whether or not you have your two different lists or if you just have one set of data okay it's not hard if you do a couple examples okay you have to make sure you practice it okay so that's it for that one